Hi, welcome back. I'm Brandon. And I'm Joy Dilly. And today we're doing lesson 14, Monday. Cool, so to start we're going to say a quick word of prayer. So just bow your heads and if you like Brandon, take off your glasses. I already <laughs> did it. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that we could be in this beautiful spot this morning. Thank you that we could um, take some time to learn more about you and what you have to teach us about education and what you want us to learn. Please be with us now as we learn more about you. Amen. Amen. Cool. So what do we have to learn today, Brennan? So for anyone who's ever uh, looked at the world and thought to themselves, it looks like the tide's kind of in Satan's favor. Why, why is everything so wrong? Why, why do we have so many uh, crooked politicians? Why, why is there so much environmental damage? Why is there so much uh, terrible stuff happening in the news, you know? It's like every time you turn on the news, there's, there's like nothing positive. Everything's all negative. We have coronavirus. Mm. And then we can stand there and we can scream out and we can say, Lord, where are you? Mm. You know? And it just seems as if Satan is winning. He's not. <laughs> but if it appears that way, it might be because Satan has an unfair advantage. Believe it or not, there are some things Satan can do that God cannot. God operates within a strict set of rules. He doesn't just ask us to live a certain way. He's not a hypocrite. He asks us to walk the same way that he walks. God cannot lie. He cannot be devious. Mm -hmm. He cannot manipulate. God is an honest, true God. How wonderful is that? Mm -hmm. That our God can't lie. He can't make up things. He can't bend the truth. He can't force his will upon us. But Satan, he can force his will upon us. He can lie. He can exaggerate. And in Genesis 3 verse 1, we see that the serpent was the master. Craftinessness. Master deceiver. That's master craftiness. <laughs> He, he was super crafty. Yeah. He was crafty. Everything he done was manipulative and sly and, and sneaky. And that's why it is so, so, so important for us as Christians. We think of that verse we read the other day where the, the devil goes around like a roaring lion yeah. seeking to devour uh, all that he can. Us as Christians, we can't afford to be outside of the circle of God's protection. We need to come to God daily, every morning and ask for his protection because we are in a situation whereby through free will, God cannot force himself upon us. Mm. We have the choice to make whether we will serve him or, or serve uh, Satan, yeah. other forces, mm. you know? And God can't just say, hey, you're gonna serve me. Mm. He can't force you to do anything. So he sits back like a gentleman and he waits for you to come to him. Mm. Meanwhile, Satan's bombarding your life with temptations, left, right, and center. So it is so important, my brothers and sisters, that every morning we wake up and we go to the feet of Jesus and we beg him for protection. Good thing is you don't have to beg him. He's waiting <laughs> for you. But just ask it. No, oh, that's so beautiful. And I think just to um, take it back to the verses that the lesson talks about. So yesterday we learned um, in... Genesis 2 that God created this beautiful place where Adam and Eve could learn all about him through nature through their relationships through all of that and then Genesis 3 starts with now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals mm. and that word crafty is completely opposite to anything we've heard the day before the day before everything was good and beautiful and and everything was perfect the way God created it and now all of a sudden there's this craftiness there's this deception right um, but it also shows us that God because he loves us and he wants a relationship with us he gave us free will he gave us the right to choose and we could decide and that as much as it's annoying because it means that we can maybe make the wrong decisions it's also really important because you can't love someone if you're forced to love them that doesn't Correct. make any sense and God wants us to love um, him because he loves us and that's free choice so yeah it's just the contrast um, the story is kind of why we are where we are right because humans chose Satan's way but it's exciting that every day we get to make a choice do we want to stick with God or do we want to stick with Satan and I think God seems like the better option because he's honest, he's true, he gives me a choice, um, he respects what I uh, think and want, where Satan doesn't seem to do that. He tries to deceive me and, and trick me into, into doing his will or what he wants. So yeah, I'm going to stick with God, but it's a decision <laughs> you guys have to make. Amen. Um, so yeah, I think my challenge for today is go read Genesis 2. Oh, well, no, Jesus read, read Genesis 3. three. Um, and maybe just, if you didn't read Genesis 2 yesterday, go read Genesis 2 and 3 so you can see the contrast, see how everything shifted. Um, and yeah, let us know in the comments if you think of anything else from Genesis 3. Um, and yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys. Awesome. Cool. You want to close? We certainly can. Heavenly Father God, 
Lord, we thank you that um, you're not a hypocritical God who asks us to walk and live a certain way, but then you yourself are a sly, crafty being. No, Lord, you are the perfect example of a gentleman. You're kind, you're loving, and you in no way infringe upon our rights. And what an amazing God we serve, Lord, that you can be so wonderful and so perfect. Father God, I pray today that none of us will be deceived by Satan's ways. None of us will fall for his uh, cunning, manipulative lies, but that we may all see through them and uh, look into our Bibles and just see Jesus and our lives may be changed for the better because of it. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for all our viewers who are still listening. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>